biocontainment facilities have a very high degree of inbuilt protection for personnel working with pathogens. Personal protective equipment, or PPE, acts as a barrier to minimise the risk of exposure to aerosols, splashes and accidental inoculation. But never forget, it is not a substitute for good laboratory hygiene and practice and is considered lastly once all other control measures have been considered and put into place. The equipment is selected according to the nature of the tasks to be undertaken and by the specific properties of the material being worked with. Whatever the task, PPE is required when working with any infectious or potentially infectious material. For example, in this lab for avian influenza viruses, we have, through risk assessment, identified three different groups or categories of virus reflecting differing hazard levels. Category A are higher risk viruses, recommended to ACDP3, and are those avian influenza viruses associated with human infection and severe disease and some uncharacterised haemagglutinating agents. Category B are medium risk viruses, those avian influenza viruses not known to have caused human infections or fatalities. Category C are low-risk viruses, which include non-H5 or H7, low pathogenic avian influenzas and avirulent Newcastle disease viruses. So, what PPE is required to help protect against each category of virus? Any person entering the containment facility must change into laboratory scrubs. The standard PPE for working with category B and C viruses in the containment laboratory includes a disposable apron, oversleeves and disposable gloves. All these should be worn while working at the cabinet, but removed and discarded in the cabinet if the operator moves away. When working with any potentially infectious material, a single layer of disposable gloves must be worn. Before working with any live viruses on the bench, permission must be obtained from the building officer. Only certain tasks with some category C viruses are suitable for working with on the bench. Wherever possible, Live viruses should be worked on in microbiological safety cabinets. Goggles or safety glasses must be worn when working with any infective or potentially infective material on the bench. The glasses or goggles must be cleaned with 70% ethanol after use. Category A and B viruses should only be worked with in a microbiological safety cabinet. The operating mode of the safety cabinet needs to be determined by risk assessment. Based on these assessments, most procedures working with category A viruses in our labs are done in a microbiological safety cabinet operating in class 3 mode. Whenever there is a need to wear P3 RPE or respiratory protective equipment, staff must first be face fitted to select the most suitable type of mask for them. And for those staff that can't get a good fit with a disposable mask, a powered P3 respirator must be worn. Hi Amanda, Hi. can we disturb you for a moment? Yes. Um, can you demonstrate to us how to take off PPE? Yes, I can show you. Uh, when exiting a cabinet, um, it's important to follow the correct order of taking off your PPE. So the first thing you do is take off your outer gloves by inversion, like this. And then you take off your oversleeves without inversion. and then your inner, inner gloves. And then slowly take your hands out the cabinet to remove the apron. Thanks, and um, how should PPE be stored? 
Uh, PPE should be stored in your normal working area so that it's easily accessible for when you want to wear it. A supply of emergency PPE should also be stored away from the infected laboratory environment in the event of a spill so that there's easy access to it. And how do you know what to wear? All information on what you should be wearing should be documented in relevant risk assessments and standard operating procedures from your organisation. It shouldn't be up to the individual to decide what they should wear, as guidance and training that they've received should be prepare them for it. In addition to the PPE already mentioned, cut-resistant gloves are also required when working with sharps with a minimum level 5 protection glove for the non-cutting hand. It must be remembered, though, that this type of glove is only cut-resistant and not stab-proof. Whatever PPE and clothing is used, it must be well-fitting, fit for purpose and well-maintained. Always check that any associated documentation is up to date and in order. And always ensure sufficient PPE is available before starting work.